You know, I was having this very good and fun conversation recently with fellow YouTuber and friend Wizthrift, and as we were talking, we were talking about what it takes to be a dungeon master and what's required for that. And I thought it was a really interesting topic because the more that I thought about it, the more that I realized that in order to be a dungeon master, the amount of things you have to do is kind of crazy. World build, writing, communication, scheduling, being able to think on the fly, being able to improvise, knowing your math, knowing the rules, knowing your players, being able to speak with your players about what's going on in the game and communicate effectively. And that's just scratching the tip of the iceberg. And that's not a topic that's new either. I'm not the first one to have pointed that out. Being a dungeon master is kind of crazy. And one of the things that we spoke about is the fact that in order to be a dungeon master, you kind of have to be just a little bit insane. But it also made me think, the idea of dungeon mastering is a very daunting task, and there's probably a good reason for that with everything I just described. But what does it take to start being a dungeon master? How can you get into that role feeling confident that you're going to be able to do a good job? Well, that's what I'd like to talk about today. So let's talk about the craziness that it takes to be a dungeon master and what you need to know in order to get into that. Let's talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and just be totally blatantly honest. The title of this video is just a little bit clickbait. Cause I'm sitting here asking, do you have what it takes to be a dungeon master? But the simple fact of the matter is, is that it's not a question that can be answered. Dungeon mastering and game mastering is not a task to be learned or a skill that you can magically get. It's more of an art form. You wouldn't look at somebody who's learning music and say, do you have what it takes to be able to play the guitar? No, you'd expect that they would practice at it and learn. Same for any sort of art piece. If somebody was trying to learn how to paint, you wouldn't say, do you have what it takes to paint something? You would expect them to go through the process of learning what it is like to paint something and decide if that was something they wanted to pursue. And yes, if you get into the professional sense, people will ask those questions. Do you have what it takes to be a professional artist? Do you have what it takes to be a professional guitarist? I, I get that. But in a strictly hobby sense, nobody looks at somebody trying to learn a hobby and says, do you have what it takes? You just know that that's something that they have interest in and you're happy that they're pursuing that. And it is the same thing with D&D. Because for real, 99% of the D&D community plays D&D as a hobby. And yes, there is the 1% that has professional dungeon mastering. And I do think you then need to ask yourself the question, do you have what it takes to be a professional dungeon master? Mostly because you're going to have to deal with criticism. But for 99% of those games, it's a hobby. We're all just having fun and we're learning. So I do apologize a little bit for the clickbait because yes, you do have what it takes to be a dungeon master as long as you have the desire to be a dungeon master. But that being said, you're not going to be good at it when you first start. I wasn't, Matthew Mercer wasn't, Abrea Iyengar wasn't, nobody is. And don't get me wrong, some people have a natural aptitude for it and they feel a lot more comfortable in that role, but that does not mean that they're just amazing at it. So the best piece of advice I can give and what I'm going to be focusing this video on is the fact that the best thing you can do is just jump in and figure it out. Truthfully, when you're starting dungeon mastering, you need a few specific things in order to be able to make sure that you can at least run your first session. You need the confidence to sit down at a table and take command and be able to let your friends know that you're going to run a game of which the intention is for them to have fun. You need to have a basic understanding of the rules so that you can make the proper calls and you need to have something for the players to interact with. Now let's start with that first part, the confidence. The simple fact of the matter is when you guys determine at your table who's going to be the dungeon master, that instills some amount of confidence. When I ran my first game, it was because my players all decided collectively that I could run the game and they had the confidence in me to do so. And that was for a variety of reasons. I was the only one who had listened to a decent amount of D&D podcasts, so I at least kind of knew how the game went. I wanted to be a voice actor at the time, so yeah, I could do a little bit of the voices and be able to get into character, and I had the most experienced role-playing outside of probably my brother. But it was the fact that they had the confidence that I could run the game that gave me the confidence to sit down and do it. And run the game I did! I've been the Dungeon Master ever since, and in fact, we're starting our new campaign this upcoming week, of which I'm so excited for! But in order to take that first leap, there has to be the confidence, the understanding that you will be able to do this. You won't nail it the first time, you're not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Nobody expects that from you, and if you're players do expect it from you, I would run away fast because it's not a healthy or realistic expectation. But you at least need to have the confidence that you will be able to do it and you will be able to figure it out as long as your friends have that trust in you. It doesn't mean you can't be nervous. It doesn't mean you can't have trepidation. It just means you have to have the confidence to try. Never forget, bravery is not the absence of fear. 
It is the decision to do something in spite of it. And then there's the next part, having a basic understanding of the rules. I do think it's important for the dungeon master to have that, but let's be clear. It's not necessarily that important for the dungeon master to be the one to know the rules. Your job is to prevent something for the players to interact with. And yes, you're supposed to adjudicate rules issues, but when you're new, that can be a lot. In my case, I was the one who read through the rulebook and I explained the rules to everybody else, so I had the most understanding of it, though I did make some big, big mistakes. Never forget the time that I did not realize that the proficiency bonus was not supposed to be added to damage attacks and those level 1 goblins never stood a chance. But it is important that somebody is there who can understand the rules, and so a lot of the times for new DMs, it's helpful to have a veteran player there who already knows things and that you can trust. They can help out with a few of those rules things and you can learn as you go along, but I do think it is important that you take the time to learn it when you can. At the beginning, it's going to be overwhelming, and I understand that, but eventually you do need to have that understanding to be able to help out the other people at the table. But take your time with it. It takes time to learn these things and there are a lot of rules. I've been DMing for quite a while now and I guarantee you that I still mess up a lot of rules and don't understand all of them. I just went through the DMG the other day and found rules I never even knew existed. So always keep that in the back of your mind. But then there's that last part, having something for your players to interact with. Notice how I did not say you have to have an adventure ready, I didn't say you have to have a world created, just something for your players to interact with. This is something that's going to be unique to every single DM. Some DMs really like having a laid out adventure they know the players are going to go on, and that's great. Definitely not my style, but great. Other DMs create an entire campaign setting and world and just have that there, and then other DMs just make sure to use the campaign settings that Wizards of the Coast has already printed for us. Honestly, I think it's all up to preference. I personally prefer to homebrew my worlds, but don't have an adventure set. I create what I know is in the world, the important forces that will interact with it, and then I let my players do what they want and create what they want to create. They write the story, I just let them know how the world reacts to what they're doing. And I keep tabs on those important forces of the world and make note of what they're doing at the same time so the world never feels static. But the truth is, when you're a new dungeon master, you don't have to have everything planned out. In fact, you probably shouldn't, otherwise that's just too much to create. I think using the pre-written supplements can be a great start because you don't have to create anything. You already have that, you just have to know the material, and that makes it a lot easier for new DMs to begin to do what they want to do. What's in the next room? Well, the book already has it. What does this NPC know? Well, the book already tells you that. But the problem is, your players will go to something the book does not have. It is inevitable, and as a new DM, you have two options. You can either start to make things up and start to practice those improv skills, or you can just tell the players, I don't have anything for this. And that's okay. I personally hate to do that because I have some sort of pride issue with being able to tell my players that I don't have something prepared, but that's my issue. When you are new, it is important to communicate with your party, with your table, to let them know what's going on, to let them know that you are doing your best and you're learning this alongside them. If that means letting them know you don't have anything prepared for this, that's fine. And if you don't want to let them know you don't have anything prepared, either start improvising or call a bathroom break and go quickly start to jot down what you're going to be doing, which is a totally valid thing to do. I would be lying if I said I haven't done that once or twice in my time. But the point that I'm making is you do not have to have everything planned. It can be helpful to have stuff planned and I would encourage you to do so. Don't just go into it with nothing, but definitely understand that you don't have to have everything. And ultimately, unfortunately, that's the best advice I can give because at the end of the day, each DM has their own style. They figure out what they like, but the only way that you can do it is to jump into it and do it. Pretty much the best way to learn to DM is to just play with your players, run a game, figure out what you like, figure out what you don't like, what your players like, what you don't like, but the beauty of it is it is an art form. You figure out how you want to do it and the different techniques that you employ. Watch other dungeon masters, learn from them, learn from your own games, figure things out for yourself, experiment, try something new, it is infinite possibility, and let's be real, that's what makes it so incredibly entertaining. The reason so many people play this game, the reason so many people play tabletop RPGs is because the infinite amount of opportunity that it gives. No game will ever be the same. Every game has something different. And to me at least, the best possible thing is the fact that there's always going to be something more for me to learn. Always something more for me to do. Yeah, maybe I ran a good game last time, but there could be a better one around the corner if I learned from what I did wrong. And that's why I love D&D. That's why I play Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop RPGs and have a great time with my friends every single week. Because it's a good time and I really enjoy doing it. So, hopefully this advice can help you out and give you the confidence you need to jump right in and run your own games. Go out into the world and make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play your role. Thank you. Come again.